John Bowden, Rock History Music, with some more bad news in rock and roll, as we were predicting before, that uh, it's just one of those things that we're, we're knowing that, uh, you know, we're in this uh, pocket of age groups where we're going to start losing a lot more people. Floyd Sneed, a drummer for Three Dog Night, for so many, all the hits, really, for the most part, has passed away. As far as we know, he was 80 years old. This is It just started this morning with a feed from John Zaka, who's a pretty reliable source, considering he's doing a documentary on Bobby Kimball, former lead singer of Toto, who was also the former leader of SS Fools, which was an offshoot band of Three Dog Night, with all the members, basically the backup band, more or less, of Three Dog Night. After they broke up, they formed SS Fools and had Bobby Kimball as lead vocals. Now, this is the note from, uh, from uh, um, uh, John Zaka. I was just given the very sad news that from Floyd Sneed's dear friend, Donna, that Floyd has passed away. Um, let me just get this out of the way. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to meet and interview this gentle, amazing man and incredible drummer. Floyd was the original drummer with a serious backbeat for the band Three Dog Night. Uh, Floyd was on all their hits, as you put, and then went on to SS Fools with uh, Joe Shermy, Mike Alsup. Uh, and Bobby Kimball, rest easy, my friend. It's very, very sad news. Hold on a second. No, thanks. Let me just get some of your comments. He's from Calgary. Yeah, I uh, I got that. Yeah, he was... I'm going to give you a little obituary on Floyd. Floyd's a great drummer. As a drummer, I really appreciated his work quite a bit. Um, tried to get an interview with him a few years ago. It just, for whatever reason, didn't work out. There's Floyd. He was born in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, November 22nd, 1942. His parents were very musical. Very musical in the church. And they were one of the more, uh, first black families, major black families, to settle in to Alberta, which was a very interesting fact. Hold on. Here we go. His older sister, Maxine, was the one who actually brought him his drum kit. And he was, she was married to a very famous figure as well, Tommy Chung, later of Cheech and Chong fame. He once played in Tommy Chung's band Little Daddy and the Bachelors as well. In the mid-60s, Sneed moved to California. By 68, he met three vocalists who needed a backing band. Danny Hutton, Chuck Negron, and Corey Wells. We had a chance to ch uh, interview in-depth Chuck a few years ago. They became Three Dog Night, and in the late 60s and mid-70s had, believe it or not, 21 top 40 hits. It was insane. Now, let me read some of these off for you, and you'll realize the the impact. And th this is uh, highlights again uh, some of the things that are uh, wrong, not only with this band, but with a lot of bands, with uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where uh, backing bands aren't given their due. Anyway, here's Chuck. The top end hits include Harry Nielsen's One. Uh, Easy to be hard, Laura Nero's Eli's Coming, Randy Newman's Mama Told Me Not to Come. Remember, they didn't write their own hits. Hoyt Axton's Joy to the World, which became the biggest song of that year, which was their biggest hit. Liar by Russ Ballard, Paul Williams' Old Fashioned Love Song. Never Been to Spain, another Hoyt Axton song. Uh, Back, Black and White, uh, which was one of my favorites. Shambhala, which was my favorite. The Show Must Go On, co-written by Leo Sayre. Leo also had a, a, a hit with that song as well. I'm getting all the, let me just get rid of my uh, my email here so you don't hear this coming on and on and on. The core band of Three Dog Night included Danny Hutton, who is still with the original band. It's, you know, people argue, is it Three Dog Night? Well, vocalist Corey Wells, who was with Danny near the end, died in 2015. Chuck Negron is solo now, as we mentioned, we talked to Chuck. Guitarist uh, Michael Alsup left in 74. He came back for a few reunions. Keyboardist uh, uh, Jimmy Greenspoon died in 2015. Bassist Joe Shermie died in uh, 2002. So Floyd was uh, joined the band 68 and left in the mid-70s. As we mentioned, after he left, he was in SS Fools with Bobby Kimball and a few other members of the backing band for Three Dog Night. He played with Ohio players for a little while as well, but a very solid player and a very, like the guy had a, 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 a one of those, he was a happy guy, you know, for the most part, he really was. Let me just get to some of your comments. I don't know why I'm getting this, hold on. 
Let me just get out of here and go back in because I'm getting one of those, you know, those YouTube, please join our YouTube uh, listening program. We're getting a lot of that. So let me, if I go back into it, I'll be able to see your comments a, a lot easier here. Here we go. Snowman. Dwayne says, hey, Dwayne, always a big supporter of our channel. Hello, John. Dwayne says, sorry to hear. Floyd Sneed was from Calgary. Indeed, he was, as we mentioned. Eric D., oh, no, another icon left us. Rest in peace, Floyd. Thank you for all the awesome memories. Thank you, uh, Eric. Appreciate that. Dwayne, Floyd Sneed uh, was also a Christian. Thank you. Greg Sales, very sad. One of my favorite bands and great drummer. Jan or Jan says, damn, I'm tired of looking at this guy. Every time he submerges on, it's always a death of the family. Well, we do a lot of interviews. Maybe you're not paying attention to the thousands of interviews we put out uh, every year. Snowman, sorry for your loss of the loss of uh, Mr. Sneed. Dwayne says, Amber Valley, Alberta has a history of African-American settlers. They were one of the first big uh, African-American settlers in Alberta. Helen, uh, good morning, John. All those iconic musicians dying. Rest easy. Eric D., Three Dog Night Jammed. Ronnie Parker, hey, John, morning, rest in peace. Salvatore, rest in peace. Dwayne says, hard not to remember Three Dog Night in the 70s. They were one of the biggest bands. You know, Grand Funk, after the Beatles, you go look at CCR, Grand Funk Railroad, and you look at Three Dog Night. And there's a few others, obviously, that were huge bands, one hit after another, that kind of owned the world. People always say, who was big after the Beatles? Well, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Who was big? Uh, Three Dog Night, right? Grand Funk. A lot of bands, but they were three of the big ones that I paid attention to. Go Kart Bob. Yeah, one liar mama told me not to come. Uh, Go Kart Eli's coming. Yeah, that was a um, there was a, a whole list of like I told you the the list of people. Uh, Laura Nero wrote that one, of course. The top tens. Harry Nielsen wrote one. Easy to be hard. Laura Nero wrote uh, uh, Eli's Coming. Randy Newman wrote Mama Told Me Not to Come. Hoyt Axton, Joy to the World, which was their biggest. Liar by Russ Ballard. Paul Williams, an old-fashioned love song. Uh, Never Been to Spain, another one by Hoyt Axton. Shambhala, I just love. To this day, when I hear Shambhala, I put it up. It's my favorite Three Dog Night song. I, I told Chuck Negron that when I met him, when I had a chance to interview him. The show must go on. Uh... Huge song for me. Love it so much. That's near the end, which was a, a hit for Leo Sayre. Not everywhere, but but Three Dog Nights certainly had a lot of success with it. Go Kart. Oh, yeah. My first concert. Oh, San Bernardino, 1969. Snowman. Sambala is my favorite song by Three Dog Night. There's just something about it. When I hear that song, uh, that's it for me. Dr. Insomnia. Joy to the World. All the Boys and Girls. Yes. Eric D. Everyone... Try to have a good day. Thank you, John, for all you do. Gotta t- go take care. Thanks, man. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. Easy to be hired. Debbie Edwards. Uh, Mickey. Show must go on. Remember the video with the keyboardist? Remember the Mad Hatter kind of... Remember the... Uh, look up after this. The the I don't know if it was a midnight special or what it was. When they were going... You know, <laughs> and the keyboardist. I don't know if that was... I don't know if that was, uh, let me see, Jimmy Greenspoon or another gentleman that was with them. There was two keyboards. Let me see. I'll, I'll, I'll show you right now. I'll tell you right now, actually, who it was. Oh, I hate it when it goes full screen. I The, the, the occupational hazard of doing one of these things <clears throat> is coming on live all the time. But also, uh, hold on. Someone else probably beat me to it, which is good. Discography. Always looking for the discography. Uh Uh-oh, I don't want to sneeze. Everyone everyone out there have sneezing fits? I'll have sneezing fits to the point where it's, I'll sneeze for... Here we go. The Three Dog Night version was from Hard Labor. Oh, I remember Hard Labor. Remember they had to, they put a big Band-Aid on? It is a Jimmy Greenspoon. That was on... Yeah. 
the show must go on. So his, he, he passed away a few years ago. But he was acting as like the, the mad scientist in the video. Look it up after. It's well worth it. Let me look up some pictures. This Floyd. Born in Calgary, which, by the way, I've, I've, uh, it's not the time and place to make an announcement, but we're moving back to Calgary, uh, where we spent the majority, I spent the majority of uh, adult life for, for family reasons. But he was born in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, November 22nd, 1942. His parents were, as I mentioned before, very musical via the church. His older sister, Maxine, uh, she's the one who bought him his first drum kit. And um, she was married at the time to Tommy Chong. Later on, Floyd joined Tommy Chong's band, Little Daddy and the Bachelors. That's not them there. That's Three Dog Night, as most of you know. There's Floyd. So in the mid-60s, Floyd Sneed moved to California. Just a few years after he moved, he met... Three vocalists who needed a backing band, Danny Hutton, Chuck Negron, and Corey Wells, who, of course, became Three Dog Night. And in the late 60s to mid-70s, they had 21, get this, 21 top 40 hits. It's insane. And we've mentioned this a few times, but we have to mention it again because it's very important. They have top 10s like, and this is just the top 10s, not the top 40s. Harry Nielsen's one, Easy to Be Hard, Laura Nero's Eli's Coming. Randy Newman's Mama Told Me Not To Come, Hoyt Axton's Joy To The World, biggest hit, biggest hit of the year. Liar was written by Russ Ballard. Paul Williams was the writer for Old Fashioned Love Song. Never Been To Spain, another one by Hoyt Axton. Black and White, Shambhala. And then The Show Must Go On, which was co-written by Leo Sayre. The core group of uh, Three Dog Night was Danny Hutton, who is still in the band, really. He's... Uh, Still there. He's the only one left after Corey Wells, the one of the three vocalists, died in 2015. Chuck Negron's still around. Everyone thought Chuck would be the first one to go, considering he had a lot of substance problems, but he's still going strong. We interviewed him a few years ago. Great interview, by the way. Guitarist Michael Alsup left in 74, came back for a few reunions. Keyboardist Jimmy Greenspoon died in 2015, and bassist Joe Shermie died in 2002. So Floyd was with them for all the hits. After Three Dog Night, went to Ohio Players and played with SS Fools with uh, Bobby Kimball, who would later become the lead vocalist of Toto. Let's see if I've got any more pictures. There you go. There's some more. Let me just move this. I don't know if I can move this down with Floyd. There, I can. Can I? Yeah, there's Floyd. There you can get a better look at him in the back, right in the middle. Right. Quite a band, really, when you look at it. There you go. Hi, guys. So, uh, you know, uh, unsettling news. Someone had mentioned whenever I come on the screen, I'm talking about death, which is not true on this channel because we have thousands of interviews every single year. But I can understand. Who wants to see my face on a Sunday morning? May he rest in peace, though. Quite a character, huh? Um, Dr. Insomnia said they also covered Heaven is on Your Mind on their first album. Cameron said, Sneed. Ann says, rest in peace, Floyd. Cameron says, uh, formerly Chuck's um, Lady Sensei. Led Zeppelin opened for them. Yep. Sneed, Sneed, and the Seed. Cameron. Out in the country, yeah. TT. Dr. Insomnia. Best sideburn since Elvis. <laughs> they, they all had sideburns back then, huh? Debbie Edwards, love your show. First time I've caught you live. They did a great version of uh, Try a Little Tenderness. They were a covers band, and a lot of people don't really care. It's amazing when you... I did a thing on Chuck Negron a few years ago when I was interviewing him. We were talking about Hoyt Axton and a lot, and Hoyt was such a character, right? And they covered a few of his songs, most notably Joy to the World, which was the number one song of that year. It was Joy to the World was... Like tie yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, with the exception of tie yellow ribbon has not stood the test of time. Joy to the world, which has become in some circles a Christmas song, people included now in their and in their Christmas on their Christmas albums, and that song would not be what it is without Three Dog Night doing it. You know, you get the original. Mike, like for instance, old fashioned love song, just an old fashioned love song by Paul Williams. Paul Williams, one of my all time favorite. Writers. He wrote for so many people. Streisand, Carpenters, Three Dog Night. The list goes on and on and on. But other people did his versions and just created magic with them. 
and same as Old Fashioned Love Song. So that has stood the test of time. You look at Love Will Keep Us Together, these number one songs from the era of the mid-70s to, to going backwards. Love Will Keep Us Together, what was that, 74, 75? Um, uh, Tie Yellow Ribbon Around the Old Oak Tree, Joy of the World. Joy of the World out of those three songs has stood the test of time more, even though I still love hearing, still love hearing Love Will Keep Us Together. But those were the kind of songs that ended up being earworms in the 70s, and Floyd Sneed was the drummer for all of those, but uh, passed away at 80 years old. Hasn't really been uh, ultrally, hasn't been announced on a wide basis yet. I'm going to read this from John Zeka on his page this morning. John is doing, John is Bobby Kimball's producer. Bobby Kimball played with Floyd Sneed in a band called SS Fools after Three Dog Night, which included other members of Three Dog Night, backing band. So, and John Zake is doing a documentary on Bobby Kimball. So he, and John also just interviewed Floyd Sneed. So this is what John wrote. I just was given very sad news that Floyd Sneed's dear friend, Dana, that Floyd had passed away. I was so grateful that I had the opportunity to meet and interview this gentle, amazing man, an incredible drummer. Floyd was the original drummer uh, with a serious backbeat for the band Three Dog Night. Floyd was on all the hits, and then he went on to SS Fools with Joe Shermie, Michael Ass, Alsup, and Bobby Kimball. Uh, rest easy, my friend. There you go. And Floyd will be in the documentary Kite on the String, which will come out hopefully this year. It looks like it'll be coming out this year, and Floyd will be on there. Probably maybe one of the last interviews he ever gave. But he was 80 years old. And I want to thank everyone who came on with us this morning. We're working on a lot of projects, lots of projects, and we are moving back to where Floyd was born, to uh, uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, uh, in on the 24th of uh, February. Anyway, take, thank you. I'm going to read a few comments before I leave. I'd be remiss if I didn't. Injured table tennis player. Hey, nice to have you back. Uh, who is Tom Verlaine? Oh, yeah, he just passed away. McGraw, y'all. Mama told me not to come, number one. Fat, uh, fat, fat back beat. Drummed for Chuck Negron after the split. He really liked Floyd, spoke very highly of him. The Salem uh, 786, before 97's breakup, the Beatles, Three Dog Night, during their early days, sold more records than the Beatles. It will, like I told you, it was like Grant Funk, Three Dog Night, and uh, the Queen's Clear Water Revival, they were really big. There were others, of course, but they were really big bands after the Beatles. It should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Debbie Reynolds, Edwards, rather, Dr. Insomnia, Google it. Uh, Debbie Reynolds. Does he make, make him an uncle of Radon Chung? I don't know. Dr. Insomnia. That's a great drummer. Thank you. I think I got all the comments. If I didn't, I'm very, very sorry. Thank you for coming on tonight. We have a new... Uh, um, it's so strange when we have a new interface for our Ecamm Live. So we're looking at it. We're going, what the heck's going on? But what was your favorite songs uh, for Three Dog Night? What were some of the your favorite tunes? Did you ever meet Floyd Sneed? I mean, here's the thing. Did you ever have a chance to like hang out with a guy? Or see him in concert? Or see Three Dog Night, which would have been an amazing experience. Uh, it, 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 it's all huge parts of rock and roll history when you look at what would a song have what what a song would have sounded like without maybe Floyd being on there. You know, every little part, every little band member added something to that. Without you know, I'm overstating the obvious, but he was the guy. How do you get in the room? You've heard me say this over and over again. How do you get in the room? You do the work. You're not being invited in any band unless you've done the work. Unless the, they know you, they can put you in that corner, that corner, that song, that song, that genre, over here, where if you don't know it, you can pick it up pretty quickly. Chances are you need to know it to get into the band. Right? You need to have the chops. I have a drummer's son who drums hours a day. You know, he says there's never enough hours to, to, get, to your, get your chops up. And and he was a little prodigy when he was a kid. And he's still knowing how much work he has to do. 
The Saint Lean 786, hard to find how many bands had four amazing lead singers like Three Dog Night. Bob uh, Jenkins had three. Shambhala, Dwayne. If you listen to Why Does Love Got to Be So Sad by Derek and the Dominoes, you can hear Joy of the World guitar licks. Robert Foss, John, I appreciate your commitment to these musicians and excellent interviews you do. Oh, you're formerly from Buffalo, as Corey Wells. Pookie says, CCR. Yeah, they were huge. Music Man, rest in peace. You're a great drummer. Dr. Insomnia. Yeah. Yeah, Tom Verlaine, yeah. From um, television. I was knee-deep. Oh, let me tell you why I didn't do it. I don't know if you can see this. You can see my cop. Look at, look. Can you see all the interviews? Can you see? Hold on. Let me move this. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if I can move this without unplugging it. There you go. See all the coffee? Coffee, water. That's all interviews that I'm doing. That's interviews from the 80s that I'm putting on uh, a digitizing interviews from the 80s. And there are hundreds of them. And you're going to be hearing them on this channel and on our sister channel. But anyway, I've had too much coffee. I'm coffeeed out. Thank you for everyone who came on to celebrate this man. Floyd Sneed. Three Dog Night. There he is in the back. What a band they were. I mean, when you consider the amount of hits that they had, and Floyd was the backbeat of all that stuff. Look at that. What a moment in time, huh? What a moment in time. Brings you back in the, uh, in 1975, I don't know how old you were, but in 75, I was 15 years old. Three Dog Night was certainly, uh, um, I remember their last single that I'd heard. Uh, uh, Everybody's a Masterpiece, remember that? The band had sort of gotten back together, stitched it together. And I loved that song. And my friends were going, that's not Three Dog, Three Dog Night's just a, like, that's a, a poor version of who they are. And I love that album. You know, I, 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 and I went back and bought a lot of their earlier stuff. But everyone's got memories of, you know, the band. So thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it. We're working on a whole bunch of interviews today. And we'll get that to you really, really soon. I'm John Bowden. Leave your comments. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the description. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.